I want to have this car running by the end of the day. We just had a huge delay. The end got all messed up and it wouldn't come out. Our replacement cylinder head is all clean, ready to go on. Very clean. Here's the block. All clean, ready to go. The original goal was too ambitious. You guys knew it, I knew it. I broke the plug on the injection pump and that goes on the back of the engine on the left cylinder head. I had to run to the junkyard and get another one. Let's keep working. Right now we got the new timing chain, the new guides, tensioners, everything is in there. I don't know what that noise is. One of three things will happen when I turn this key. It will either not run, run well, or run like garbage. Only one way to find out. Okay, on this episode, I'm gonna have to be talking here because there were a couple extra things I forgot to say in the video for some reason, so I'm gonna need to mention it here. The first of them being that we failed to get the car running. We failed to get the car to run and drive properly. We did get it to run, but it was only on three cylinders due to the time and chain slipping. And for that reason, it wasn't able to drive properly. I was able to move it back and forth a couple feet and was eventually able to drive it up onto the tow truck that we eventually used to transport it to my new location. We did fail our mission to have the car driving and actually be able to drive the vehicle to the new location. We actually ended up getting it towed to my new location. The car was sitting there for about a month until I could get around to it. It turns out I had to take the valve covers and front engine cover back off because the timing got messed up. What happened was the original tensioner failed. It was that cheap old eBay timing chain tensioner. There were two main reasons why the car failed to run in the last video. So obviously one there was the aforementioned issue with the timing chain. The engine was only running properly on about three cylinders, which is not enough to move a 4,400 pound vehicle. Number two, if I didn't say it already, the engine is direct inject. This is the GM 3.6 liter LLT. That's a direct injected engine. Since it was direct injected, there was air in the fuel lines. Since I disconnected it to take the cylinder heads off and you know, you know how it goes. Anyway, after reconnecting those lines, the method by which you're supposed to purge the air is not super straightforward. So I just use my own intuition. In the same way you would bleed the air from a Duramax diesel, I just kind of cracked the lines until there were no more bubbles coming out. And the engine ran a lot smoother until I got the timing chain fixed. So what I did was super janky, super roaches to wrenches, which is exactly what this YouTube channel is about, man. You know, some people say we don't do things right, but here, at Roaches to Wrenches, the primary concern is not about doing things right. It's about doing what will work, okay? Making the cheapest possible remedy. Anyway, took the engine back apart, valve covers, front engine cover back off, reset the timing chain. I tried cranking it and the chain slipped. That was the noise we were hearing during that first start. I don't know why, I don't know how the valves didn't bend and how they didn't interfere with the piston, but the chain slipped, but the the valves didn't hit the piston. I don't know how. I reset the timing chain for a little added help. I just zip tied those timing chains together. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna hold the timing chain together with zip ties. Tension is no good. This one was all right. The one at the bottom was all right. This one was no good from the factory. It's aftermarket. Literally bought the cheapest one I had. And it was sitting in my garage for like three years. Until putting it on this car. So hopefully this works. I don't want to have to take this engine apart again. Because the tension was so bad it just slipped right when I started the car the first time and the timing was off, so. <sighs> we'll see, stay tuned. 
I, I know it sounds crazy, but those zip ties did not end up holding the timing chain indefinitely, you know, going into the future. It was only to hold tension on those timing chains together up until the timing chain is able to build oil pressure and it can sustain itself, if that makes sense. And this is absolutely crazy. I know some of y'all thinking that, like, I've never seen anyone do something like that. I don't think anyone else has ever done something like that. It was just crazy, but it was my own vehicle. You know, I was willing to take that chance. Yeah. Put the engine back together and it ran like a champ. The next issue we ran across was coolant leaks. There were coolant leaks everywhere because I didn't replace any of the gaskets. Those rubber gaskets for the water pump, the one at the back of the engine by the thermostat, pretty much every O-ring had to be replaced. So I ordered some of those online in addition to Ace Hardware and got one of the O-rings as well because it was about the same size and it fit. So that was fine. I installed those and that solved most of the coolant leaks. This will hopefully be the last bit of engine work needed on this car. Have a new water pump and the associated gasket, as well as the seals that go with that outlet. So as far as I know, those are the only things that are leaking. So we're gonna replace those parts. Here's how I knew the water pump was bad. First of all, it was leaking a little bit. I could see it from behind the water pump. And secondly, this thing pivots, the shaft pivots. You, can, you can't you can see it. You can't see it on camera, but I guarantee you things are wobbling back and forth. So we're gonna pop that off. Well, there it is. You can't really see it or you might be able to see it, I'm not sure, but this shaft pivots on its axis. Hopefully I can get this out of here. I gotta unbolt the intake manifold. This is what I suspect was leaking. This needs to be replaced as well. Oh yeah. Y'all see this? See that? Yeah. Just completely comes apart, just disintegrated. See the surface as well. We need to clean that up. Whenever you guys are doing major engine work like this, don't cheap out. Just replace the seals. Each one of these seals are almost $10 a piece even if you buy them online, but it will be worth it not having to come back in here again. Not sure how good of an idea this is, but this is so rotten it just it won't come out.
Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. It's coming up. It worked. It softened up the this rubber. There we go. See that? This rubber was so stiff. This synthetic rubber, whatever material you want to call it. It's out now. Okay, I cleaned up the O-ring surfaces. This one right here. That one there. This gasket surface was flat on the surface before. Now it's sticking up a little bit, so I know it's going to seal. This one's good to go. I torqued it to 40 inch pounds, then 89 inch pounds. Now I'm putting the pulley on. It's all back together now. I took this on two 15 to 20 minute test drives and I've had it fully up to temperature. I parked it back here and it's been sitting now for another 20, 30 minutes. And so far, so good. No more coolant leaks. Usually by now, it's dripping out a lot once the car shuts off. But there's nothing. I mean, maybe just a few residual drops. But I'm I'm pretty sure the coolant leaks have been resolved on this car. So I'm going to put those plastic engine covers back on. Now let's talk about the wheels. They weren't powder coated, they were painted. However, this paint was extremely sticky. No amount of paint stripper could be used to remove this paint. That was extremely unfortunate. I wasn't even able to find any wheels locally. I actually had to drive to another state and we got a whole set of wheels for 250 bucks and the tires had decent tread on them. I also used paint stripper to get rid of the paint on the brake calipers. They had this hideous neon yellow and neon green paint on the brake calipers so I got rid of that and it was looking real nice after that.
before we were able to actually get the car driving, I had to do an alignment. Remember on the last episode, we had the whole subframe out of the car and predictably as a result of that, the alignment was all out of whack. I also didn't bolt in the control arms correctly to the subframe. I didn't put them exactly where they were where they were originally. So I had to fix that. And then I did a little string alignment because of course I was too cheap to take it to a shop. The string alignment was actually, the string alignment was actually far more successful than I expected. The car drove straight as an arrow. Ever since I've had this car driving, I've been experiencing a severe vibration issue uh, when I step on the gas. So that's why I'm taking this car right now to show you what it is. I know what it is, but I want to show you what it is. Um, because other people on YouTube, they, uh, they usually just replace the part without actually showing the symptoms. So I just want to show you what this is and uh, what's been going on. So what this is, is the drive shaft carrier bearing. It's been bad on this car since before I had it. I didn't know it was bad because the car I didn't have the car wasn't running and driving when I bought this car so the symptom of a bad carrier bearing is when you step on the gas you get a severe drive shaft vibration okay right about now do y'all y'all listen okay did y'all hear that <laughs> okay I'm gonna turn around right about now and we're gonna head back to the crib and get this thing replaced today. All right, so we're back at the crib. Here is the center carrier bearing. I just got it in the mail. You can see how it is. The drive shaft goes through this hole and this is the bearing it rides on. There's a little dust shield that comes with it as well. And um, so yeah, and this part is what bolts up to the chassis. It is a two piece drive shaft. That's how it works. We're gonna pop off the drive shaft today, hopefully get this replaced. And as far as I know, that should be the last piece of the pie to get this car complete. And going underneath the car, the way you verify the issue, you can touch the drive shaft and you can see it. See that? So yeah, that's definitely the problem. Before pulling this drive shaft completely, I want to show what's actually happening. There's the drive shaft. So you can see how the whole thing is broken. That's that's the sound you're hearing. So all I'm gonna do now is pull off the rest of this drive shaft. You see how the entire bearing is separated? The rubber here is all worn out. This car has well over 150,000 miles. It's gotten towards the end of its lifespan. These types of issues will arise. I removed this little clip off camera some vice grips. Now I need to separate this from this. All right, folks, it's the next day. Got the drive shaft back in, the car's all back together. As you can see, it's back on the ground. I tried to start it and it won't start. If you remember the first time we started it, the battery was really bad. Um, I thought it was completely toast. We got it to start on its own without a jump pack after the engine was running. That lasted for a couple weeks. However, now that we have the drive shaft back in, 
it doesn't want to start at all. And as you can see, I'm trying to do a little ghetto load test. But you can tell from the voltage right there, it's not even going to pass a voltage test. So the battery is most likely internally shorted, so we need to get a new battery. I just picked this up from Walmart. This was $163. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. The prices are going up. But uh, let's get this thing thrown in and take this on a test drive. All right, that's it. Time to provide some closure. The car runs good, drives good. I put the battery in, the car started right up. I'm glad I put the battery in. I don't wanna to have to replace the alternator because of a bad battery. As far as the drivability, it drives good, but I've stepped on the gas a couple times and no, no intense vibration, no clunking, no nothing. For the most part, there's nothing wrong with this car. Yeah, I'm gonna punch it a little bit. Now I can put the pedal to the metal and uh, see what this thing can really do. 3.6 V6 power. Yeah, see, there's nothing wrong with this thing. That's all for now. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you all for watching. As for now, stay strong, stay healthy, stay inspired. I'm out. God bless.